welcome to season two of Blooming in Brisbane and tonight I present to you our episode two. Now on tonight's episode we visit Bob the Bee Man, Noel Burdett pops by and shows us some great indoor plants, Claire Bickle with Wow Factor Herb and also Uncle with Arts and Crafts. But first let's go to Gillian Coombe. Now we're here looking at the last of the gardens. Now this lavender, tell us about it. It got planted because we were going away on holiday. We needed to keep it alive while we were away. And I've always loved it. My nan's grown it for years and years. And I love having the smell of it in the house. As you can see, it's getting bigger and bigger and I'm not quite sure what to do with it now. Well, normally you'd give it a cut back when it finishes flowering. Does it finish? No, no, it just keeps going and going. <laughs> At one stage, you're going to have to do a little sacrifice, light prunes regularly, and that will keep it going. What do you do with the cuttings? Uh, I usually dry them out, and that way I've got them to give away to people or to just have in the house. Otherwise, if you mix them in with other bunches of flowers that you can get, and with the rosemary, it's, it's always been nice having the combination of the scents in the house with those when we had rosemary. <laughs> you hang them upside down so the oil stays in. It'll make it more fragrant and they last so well. How long do you usually hang them when you're drying them? I've got a batch that's been going on about three months now. That's <laughs> probably just because I've forgotten about them. But usually within in this heat, it usually only takes a few weeks and I can see that they're quite dry. Now I notice the lavender's, uh, the lavender's doing well. The rosemary's struggling. I think he's, uh, the lavender's is the alpha dog here and what I would be doing with the rosemary is taking cuttings now, grow them on, and then plant them further away because this is just, people are always saying, I can't grow lavender. And this, this is a French lavender, and they're the best kind I find for Brisbane. But it is just a monster. And at the end, what have you got down there? Oh, well, we've got a self-seeded tomato bush, uh, some of our oregano still growing, and some of our garlic chives, which mm. were in the original garden bed on the other side, which I transplanted, and they've just gone gangbusters. Anyway, um, garlic chives are great, mm. especially around tomatoes. They help keep away some of the pests, and they're wonderful for salads and to use in the garden. So companion planting, mm. you've got it, you're doing excellent. Uh, often you see they say plant marigolds, but you've got the lavender and that's bringing a lot of bees in the area. We're trying to film without being stung today and we're, we're getting there. And again, you've got another one of your... A worm farm, yeah, this is the other worm farm and uh, same thing as the other garden bed. We just try to uh, keep the garden scraps um, uh, going in there and try to keep the, the worms going in, um, in the garden. Now, I noticed the dogs about. The dog droppings would never go in these, would they? No, no. no. no you don't try to put anything like that or meat scraps in there. Just keep it to your veggies, maybe a bit of sh shredded newspaper or anything like that that's lying about. The scraps out of the gardens, wonderful, but just be a little cautious what goes in there. Jill, can you put eggshells into the worm farms? That's something I'm not sure about. I have put them in, but I know someone's going to say I'm evil. And please write in and tell me if I'm wrong. I'm always open to suggestions that I have seen them used before. Okay. I've been holding off. I wasn't too sure on that one. So. Hi, my name's Claire Bickle, and I've got another wow factor herb for you guys today. This is one of my favourite edible plants. It's the peppermint geranium. This particular geranium has furry soft leaves. It only grows to around about, well, I suppose, 30 centimetres high. It has a sprawling habit. It likes full sun to semi-shade and probably likes a little bit more moisture than the average geranium. Now this peppermint flavoured geranium is the foliage you use predominantly. You could probably use the flowers as well in various different types of applications where you want a peppermint scent. But my favourite thing to use this geranium for is to actually pinch off the leaves quite so they're flat so there's not too much stem on the bottom and I like to lay those leaves flat in the bottom of a cake pan tin. On top of that I like to pour a chocolate cake mix, pop it in the oven. When you actually take that out of the oven 
you'll find that that peppermint flavor has actually come up halfway through the cake tin, up through into all the mix. So you end up having a really lovely, naturally peppermint flavored chocolate cake that you've made at home using your very own peppermint geranium. It definitely gets a lot of people talking. It's a bit of an exciting thing to do. And you can even use the flowers as a bit of a garnish on the side of the cake as well. Hi, I'm Anka and welcome to Blooming in Brisbane Crafts where I take you each week on a step-by-step -step tutorial on showing you how to make really cute garden crafts that are sure to keep you and the kids busy in the garden. So today we're going to be making chalk pot. What's chalk pots you may ask? Well, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be painting them with blackboard paint and just decorating them with chalk. So all you'll need is a terracotta pot, some chalk, blackboard paint and a paintbrush. To show you the final outcome, I prepared one earlier and as you can see is really quite simple. So for today's one, I am going to be painting the outer rim just to match this one. So what you want to do, you just want to grab a little bit of paint on your paintbrush and then just start painting away. You only really need about one layer, but if you want to have two, go ahead and do that. So when you're done painting, you want to leave it overnight to dry. So in the morning, it will look like this and then you can go ahead and start decorating. So once your pot is done, you can go ahead and grab some of your chalk and start decorating. I'm going to be writing laughter on mine and some nice inspirational words. So guys, that was the chalk pot. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you decide to make some of your own, send us a link on Facebook and add us on Instagram. And I'll see you next week on Blooming in Brisbane.